The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Another day at work, la tita, another day. Ben! Ben! <gasps> but, 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 you're me! I am you! You from the future. So in the future, I build a time machine? Precisely, but ironically, there's not enough time to explain. I've come here to bring you this, an obsolete piece of technology from my time that holds the key to humanity's survival. An obsolete Apple Watch? How far from the future do you come? Three months. Now if you excuse me, I've got to travel to the year 2929. That's the year Half-Life 3 finally came out. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bend them hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So my future self from the future came back to the present, everybody following this so far, to give me this, an Apple Watch, so we can do a teardown video of it. I'm sure in the future, Apple Watches are available at every corner drugstore, but in 2015, they're a little hard to come by. So yeah, we're gonna take it apart, see what's inside, and see what makes it tick. Let's get started. Let's start by unboxing this watch from the future. The box is quite heavy. I think there must be a watch in here and like a lead brick. If it's a $10,000 Apple Watch, maybe it would be a gold brick, or at least a silver brick. Oh, it's like a space egg. What the heck is this? Designed by Apple in California. Beauty. I guess this is supposed to be like an experience, you know, like you feel really special doing what? Huh? Okay, what's this? Oh, this must be some sort of inductive charging station. That makes sense. Nothing else down there. Oh. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, it looks like a giant dial caliper case. I wish it was a giant dial caliper. Oh, an Apple dial caliper. So the rumor Apple's making a car. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's magnetic. All right. Oh. Oh, um, these are probably blood oxygen sensors. Uh, you can shine light through your fingers or I guess your wrists and actually. Uh, Get blood oxygen readings. I wonder how this thing opens. <laughs> That'll be the next big question. Let's try it on first. See how much oxygen is in my blood. All right, I'm gonna set up the watch before I take it apart because I'm not Dave Jones. Wow, I can pair the Apple Watch to the iPhone. <gasps> the watch reimagined. <laughs> of course. Hold the Apple Watch up to the camera. Oh, I see, that's some sort of digital signature. Interesting. Oh, I definitely wanna figure out what my heart rate is. Maybe I'm dead. I guess the Apple Watch isn't as big as I thought it would be. Just like Dalton. All right, my heart rate is 83 beats per minute. Oh, it went down. Oh, I should try holding my breath. <gasps> Can tell you if you're dead or not. Is that the feature? <laughs> Am I dead app? Well, let's compare the thickness of the Apple Watch to our oscilloscope watch. It's pretty similar. The back of the uh, Apple Watch is kind of raised. That's where the sensors are. So you can shine light through your skin and actually get your heart rate. And it should be able to also detect your blood oxygen rate if I had to guess. Yeah, so now I guess the question is, how do we take this apart and examine the future technology? Well, we have a spooger tool here. I'm not sure if it's got a fine enough tip though to actually get in here. I could try grinding down the edge of it, or I could try using a knife. I will not let the glue defeat me. There we go. Ah, oh, remember when they put things together with screws? I remember. These two black straps are very likely the Bluetooth antenna 
and the antenna is around the outside of the screen here. The reason for that is because the screen is glass, it won't block the signal like the metal case will. It's acting a little funny. Maybe it's drunk. Hope I didn't wreck anything. Looks like the touch controls are bonded directly to the LCD. I'm gonna try to remove the antenna separately. All right, Bluetooth antenna. I've had just about enough of you. Holy crap, like half of this thing is a uh, rumble motor. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a taptic engine. Because Apple probably, you know, invented vibration. <laughs> I was inspired by the chariots of ancient Rome, and I figured those chariots vibrated. And I realized the Romans had got the idea from us, actually. Let's see, there's a little door there. Man, they don't want this to accidentally come unconnected, do they? Oh, there it goes. I mean, it's well built. I mean, what can you expect? It's Apple. Here's the inside of the screen. This connector is probably for the touch controls. See how it goes down over here? Probably a controller IC there, and then down to the bottom. And then these pads probably go to the front for the touch controls. And the secondary connector is likely for the LCD itself. Uh, down here, you can't really see it, but there's a uh, long rectangular raised portion under the captain tape, and that is going to be your LCD controller module. All right, let's set that aside. Take a look at the guts. That's a duck's guts. They probably couldn't copyright the word haptic, so we have the taptic engine. So haptics is just a fancy word for rumble motors reacting to touch. Battery is pretty big. You can see that in a lot of these uh, watches. The battery is like half the watch. And it's glued in place, it would feel like. Let's see if we can hear the glue. Oh, I can hear it. I wish I had a cool accent. Oh, look, in case you take it apart, there's a secret message. S1. Oh. I'm gonna separate the battery from its connector. If only I were an Apple genius. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's probably uh, temperature sensors on there. See the additional pins? It's kind of weird. This is this is where the screen connects, but it kind of moves around. So I wonder what it's connected to. Oh, I see. It's uh, this flat flex is taped to the taptic engine, not the haptic engine. So I bet we could peel that up with a knife. If you take a look here, there's a. Um, secret port of some kind. And on the inside here, uh, there's some flat flex cable going to it, so it's probably some sort of diagnostic port. We still haven't found the um, processor or anything. It's probably very small. Ugh, tri-wing security screws inside of it. That's pretty weird. Usually the security screws are on the outside of the device, and once you get past those, it's just Phillips on the inside because who cares? I have this tri-wing screw device, but it's not quite small enough. Hmm. It's time for a tech timeout. Element 14's The Ben Heck Show is all about solving problems with electronics, and we're always looking for great new ideas from our viewers and the electronics community. Submitted project ideas should ideally solve problems that are often overlooked, such as a device you wish existed but is not commercially available or affordable. The solution should be both reasonable in price and unique in their execution. Also, since the projects will be part of our show, we're looking for solutions we can build within two to three episodes of time, in general, under a month each. Let us know your great build ideas by visiting element14.com forward slash TBHS and click on Solving Problems with Electronics. We'll discuss the top ideas each month on the community site, and the most useful and unique entries will actually get built on future episodes of The Ben Heck Show. We hope to hear all your great ideas soon, and thanks for watching. Let's go in here and see what this is. Another connector.
Oh, that must be for the microphone. See how this antenna is on it as well? So the internal connector here connects to the microphone and the Bluetooth antenna, which goes around the screen. So I can probably remove the antenna. I feel like I'm doing an autopsy on like a gooey alien or a, or a possum fetus. Yep, yeah, gotta add that to my list of must-haves in Possum 3, Possum Fetus. This is the Taptic engine, and it looks like the speaker is attached to it. These screws are a little hard to get at, but I think I can get them. A really small tack switch. So I don't think this thing would be super waterproof, so I wouldn't go, uh, you know, jumping into lakes with your Apple Watch anytime soon. There's some sort of port at the bottom of the watch. It must be for analysis or programming or something. It's got really tiny screws on it. Uh, let's see what's in here. Oh, it's like a pogo pin connector. See that? Six. Mm, reminds me of a JTAG or something. I wonder how that opens up on the other side. Oh, it just pops out. Oh, that must be like the end of the ribbon cable chain. I've pulled out the Taptic engine, which I believe is a linear actuator, not a rotational motor. So that might be fun to take a look at in more detail. I'm surprised at how big this thing is. I mean, it's really big. A typical cell phone rumble would be like a quarter of this size. There's like a magnetic bar hanging there. I wonder why. Let's see what happens when we actuate it. Apple, we invented magnetism. <laughs> oh, I see. It's just uh, moving this magnetic thing back and forth. Whoa, there's a mouse in there. That's how it works. <laughs> now the coil is moving instead of the taptic engine. If only I had the taptic engine. You know, this could actuate in either direction. Maybe that's what they were going for. Yeah, I can't move much with the top off of it. I'm going to rebuild the taptic engine. Rebuild it here. Stronger. Increase the magnetic field of the taptic engine. The taptic engine. <laughs> Newton's laws of physics reinvented. It's funky foam reinvented. All right. Are you ready for the foam tick engine demonstration? Yeah. <laughs> the foam tick engine. <sighs> Again, this is like, it's like half the watch is this linear actuator thing. Hey, you got a phone call. Pull your phone out of the pocket. Maybe they didn't want it to vibrate. Maybe they want it to be more like a tap, 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 you know? I guess that would be a different feel. Well, it's a linear actuator for a rumble, I guess, because it's cool. All right, looks like there's one more screw here to remove the dial. I did notice the dial does click in. I don't know why I didn't notice that before. There could have been hundreds of Apple Watch functions I completely missed because of that. Oh man, this too is, my, everything on this thing is connected with ribbon cables. There's like just flat flex ribbon cables everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna try to get the um, heat sink off and reveal what well, I assume it will be the circuitry. That's probably also glued in place because it's the year 2015. <laughs> So this is going to be your main motherboard. Yeah, so we're thinking this is the Wi-Fi antenna and adapter. It's the only exposed integrated circuit on this thing. Everything else appears to be encased in resin inside of this uh, heat sink can. I'm not sure we'll be able to get at it. Let's peel up the vitality sensor. There we go. Oh, all right. I'm just going to guess how this works because I don't know. These are probably some sort of LEDs that emit some frequency of light that reacts to your skin, again. And I would imagine uh, the two sensors here are, I don't they almost look like some sort of charge couple device. Like they probably get a reaction to the light from your skin and through that they're able to determine your heart rate. So underneath this, you can see the inductive charging coil. See how it goes around the bottom there? Let's take a look at all the Apple Watch parts. So there's the aluminum shell, which is pretty nice. The inductive charging ring, 
the blood sensor, the crown control and the button, and a small lithium ion battery. This is uh, about the same size as the one we used in our oscilloscope watch. The screen, which is a fairly self-contained module. We have two connectors on it, one for the touch, one for the LCD itself. Then the main board, which is bonded to a piece of aluminum and has pretty much all of the flat flex ribbon cables coming off of it for all the connections. And then the only exposed chip is this one, which we believe is Wi-Fi. I mean, that makes sense if it's outside of the uh, can there. Okay. Then here are the parts we found inside. The Taptic engine, speaker, the button, and this is the Wi-Fi antenna. This is the port at the bottom of the unit for debug, and that has some gold in it, so if you can't afford a gold Apple Watch, you can still buy an Apple Watch with gold in it. Or you can just buy any electronics, and there would probably be gold in it. Uh, yeah, oh, and uh, this was what we believe to be the Bluetooth antenna. That concludes the teardown of the Apple Watch. The thing I found most surprising taking it apart was the size of the Taptic engine, the thing that used a linear actuator to create feedback. I mean, it was quite big. It was probably like three times as big as your typical rumble motor in a cell phone. So that must have been really important to them. The battery took up a lot of space too, but that's pretty common. I mean, most cell phones are like 70% battery if you actually open them up and look inside. Overall, a well-built product, although I wish it would have used a little more screws and a little less glue because some parts were pretty tricky to pry apart. Have you ever taken apart something like the Apple Watch before or an iPod? What was the coolest thing you found inside? Let us know at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can also learn about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Man, I can't believe I have gray hair in the future. Who would have thought? Whoa, future self, what happened to your gray hair? My gray hair is a thing of the past in the future. Whoa, slow down, Doc, English. I don't speak Stephen Hawking. Let me explain. Here, use this whiteboard. Because of your teardown video, the Apple Watch becomes a raging success at this point in history, which means in the future, the Apple Watch landfill radiation explosion never takes place. This avoids the 2016 hair color extinction event that occurred in humans, creating an alternate timeline in which I have my hair color, future humans have their hair color, and right here, where I've come back from the future, back through time, to explain this all to you. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I'm glad I could help save the future. It's always been on my to-do list. You helped more than you could ever know. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to return to my time. Three months from now? Why don't you just like wait and save some space fuel or whatever it is your time machine runs off of? No, I sorely miss all of the flying cars, cold fusion, and fax machines we have in the future. I can't take another minute of this internally combusted, fossilly fueled dinosaur burning technology. Good day, sir. Nothing else to do, have I? Argue about 10 cent coupon, I will. <laughs> it's good you can't charge it through your wrist. That'd be cool. But you'd probably need to be a robot in order to do that. In which case, why would you need a watch? You'd probably have an internal clock. There are dozens of us. All kids in the future wear their pants inside out. Would you like to tweet about your purchase, Al Gore Yoga? No. <laughs> The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.